one working week this week, the former Forest footballer who set up a thriving business. It's not about money, it, it's about everybody's future. And we'll meet the man who's given up a job in Harrods to set up shop here in Nottingham. The key objective of mine is to bring something to Nottingham that otherwise wouldn't be here really. And I'll be asking what type of business you would choose if you were to set up on your own. Probably nails. An airline company. Gamble. I know if you're going to be happy and made the right choice. All that to come, but first, empty shops all around me. What on earth is happening in Nottingham? Castle, Mountain and Moor and Maid Marion Way, the latest shop to close down. The building next to it is empty too. Just last week we were talking about the Lace Market Hotel closing, although signs that may be about to reopen. So what's actually happening? Well, let's have a chat with Chris Hobson from the Chamber of Commerce. And Chris, you know, you're stood in front of a, another empty shop, but it must be a worrying sign for your members. It's obviously very disappointing for the people who used to shop here and the people who used to work here. The bigger picture is slightly more positive. So if you compare where we are now to three years ago, there's a 10% lower under occupancy rate in retail, so that's positive. And Nottingham is still the fifth most popular destination outside of London when it comes to retail. There are issues in Nottingham, there's lots of work going on. I think lots of businesses, not just retailers, are waiting to see how that settles down. So if you're thinking of opening up a business, I think you might think maybe we'll give it a little while for the tram works to be finished and, and come in then. But a, a, overall, a positive picture. So you're talking about things like the, the work on the A453 and the tram works. Do you think that's putting people off coming into the city? I think people, are, and particularly businesses, are pragmatic in that there is some short-term pain. And I think people probably would look at the, the, the length of time it takes to get in and, and think about other options. However, in the longer term, it's going to be positive. And I think people realise that and businesses realise that. So, uh, so grinning and bearing it for now. So you're the Chamber of Commerce representing business. What are you saying to the council about what needs to be done in the city centre? It's important that the council keep talking to businesses to make sure that changes that do take place are business friendly. You know, businesses know what they're doing better than anyone that's elected to an authority. So that's important. There's a consultation going on at the moment called the Time, Space, Place Plan. It's a bit of a mouthful and it's Nottingham City's plan essentially to develop the wider city area. And we're saying today we need to make sure that they're talking to our members so when it comes to changes to roads, incentives to business in certain parts of the city, that there's a joined up approach in that. What are your priorities then when you say to the council, what do you want them to be doing to help business? Well, we need to be sending a very, a very uh, positive message that business is open as usual. It's really important that anything the council can do, along with businesses, to bang that drum is taking place. In terms of making Nottingham a great city to be, we think it's a partnership approach rather than any one party doing that. So here you are stood in front of a, another empty building, that company that's just gone into liquidation, but you're not downhearted then? Really sad for, for, for the people here and the people involved in, in this business. The overall picture is, is slightly rosier, but obviously that's no consolation to, to, to people involved, involved here today. Well, let's get some good news now. When shops may be closing, but our manufacturers at least are enjoying something of a boom. I've been long to see one company that's growing rapidly. It's a rare sight these days, a metal bashing factory that's thriving. A1 Flues at Booton in North Nottinghamshire has survived the recession and is expanding quickly. And that has to be good news for us all. Manufacturing is a bigger part of our economy than anywhere else in the country. Nationally, it's 10% of GDP. In our region, it's 16% and there are signs of a strong recovery. Things are picking up. We run a quarterly survey and we have done so since 2012 and over the last 12 months we've seen it strongest ever. We we're seeing companies who are certainly in this area in East Midlands, we're looking 50% of our respondents are looking to invest in new technology, 62% um, expecting to see increase in sales over the next six months and in line with that they're expecting to see jobs growth. So it's a very buoyant picture at the moment here in East Midlands. How does that feed through to the rest of us? Does it mean higher wages for people that work here? Does it mean more jobs? Yeah, it means um, certainly more jobs. Um, the Manufacturing Advisory Service is estimating an increase of some 23,000 jobs over its three years. So we would expect to see um, more jobs. And naturally, as, as the economy generally um, improves, we expect to see wages increase as well in line. The firm makes exhaust flues for heating systems at some of the country's biggest building projects, including the Shard in London. Staff from this corner of Knotts travel the country. It's a family business in a former mining area where many jobs have been lost. But this company still has the feel of a close-knit community, with many of the workforce friends and family. 
Well, let me just show you something. This is what's known here as the incest list. It's not as bad as it sounds, but it just shows how everybody in this place is related to somebody else. It's a pretty intricate set of lines, and two of the people that feature on here are two very long-serving members. So, David, you've been here, what, 41, 41 years? 41 years, yeah. And Paddy? I've been here 33 years. And what's it like as a place to work? It must be all right, David, if you're still here. Well, it must be, yeah, because I've enjoyed everything about it, really. Yeah. What was it like when you started? There were only five of us here. Yeah. And what's it been like watching it grow? It's incredible, really. And Paddy, what was it like when you started here? Well, I mean, mostly it was a family room place where everybody knew everybody else, all local people. Uh, I mean, benefits is it's local. The pay's not too bad, so I mean, it's pretty good. Is it right? Is the pay all right there, Dave? It's okay. <laughs> That's as far That's as you're prepared saying, to go. Yeah. And but is it, it's you know it's got a kind of family atmosphere here, hasn't it? We're yeah. talking about this list. Is it right? Does everybody know everybody? More or less, yeah. There's got some newcomers coming into the firm and that, and uh, you know you get to know them, you know, by just walking around and speaking to them. And I was thinking, you know, there's been some tough times around here with the pits closing, well, textile right. factories yeah. going, so it must it's, be good to see a firm doing well. Yeah, it killed, it killed the village, actually, uh, as bad old. You know, it's really killed the village with the pit shutting, yeah. And what, how important is it, Paddy, having a company like this here? Well, it, 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 it's important for the local people to have somewhere like this. Everybody can go. They're all related. I mean, there's several different generations working down here. Eh? The dads, cousins, uncles. I mean, it's, uh, that's all I can say about it. And as the recovery strengthens and the company continues to pick up orders, it's now gearing up to recruit more workers in the coming months. So let's find out how this firm manages to manufacture, not just in the UK, but right here in Notts. I've got three directors here. And John, just tell me first of all, I mean, how tough is it working in this sector at the moment? Um, it, it has been tough. The, the, the past 18 months has been tough in the industry as a whole, I think. Um, but we seem to be coming out the, the, the back end of this so-called recession that we've been in. I say the past, the past 18 months, 12 months, have been very, very tough out there. Uh, very tough competition from Europeans manufacturing and bringing stuff into the country. Um, but we seem to have done a relatively good job to ride the recession out. Um, we've never been short of work. We've just been short of the, of the bigger jobs, I suppose, which, again, they, they seem to be coming out the ground a little bit more now. Um, I think a lot of stuff got shelved in and around the capital city. Um, but we, we seem to be seeing more of the bigger jobs coming into, into play, so hopefully the next 18 months, the next five years, 10 years is going to be a lot more promising for us. And let's be honest, it's unusual to see this kind of operation these days anywhere in the UK, isn't it? Are you, are you kind of aware of that and how, you know, how well you're doing? It certainly is, yeah. I mean, we've been around um, 41 years this year. We celebrated our 40th year last year, so we must be doing something right. Well, Colin, if I can come to you, and some of our viewers might actually recognise you as a, a, former, a former Forest footballer, and we'll talk to you in a while about that. But actually, first of all, I want to talk to you about the fact that you're the reason this company's here. You're a local lad, aren't you? Yeah, I, I, I came, well, the family came down from Scotland uh, when I was 10 years old. Uh, my father was a woodcutter. Uh, the, the rest of the family they were all in, into mining. Uh, uh, I went to school locally. I left school, went to play football. Had a, a quite a brief spell at, at, at playing football, which I enjoyed. Uh, and then um, got married, had kids, and that. So I had to think about, you know, you've, you've got to look after your family and do stuff. So, and this is when I, you know, I, I really thought, well. I'll have to find something that I can, I can do and, and get some sort of career with. I worked for a Canadian firm that did domestic ductwork. Started there sweeping the floors, being the storeman and stuff like that, and finished up as a works manager running the place with about 200 and odd people. Got a little bit frustrated because there was lots of things that I wanted them to do, and the guy from Canada wasn't interested in doing it. So I thought, well, if he ain't going to do it, I'll try and do it myself. So about 400 quid and uh, cleaned a chicken shed out and and then we started to do it and with a lot of help from the guys that we obviously employ and good customers hard work we're in the position that we're at today and i mentioned to john it's unusual to have a manufacturing company in the uk now what benefits do you get from being in north Knox? 
Well, I think the benefits are, obviously we were in the mining area and unfortunately for the mining area, it, most of it's is shut down and there was a lot of people that wanted to work and had skills and we recognise that and we've got lots of ex-miners and, and ex-redundant people. The problem was you can't go to university to learn the trade that we're in. There is no real apprenticeship for it apart from what we can teach them ourselves. We've trained our own staff and given them skills that you can't get anywhere else. It was very hard. This is the third recession that I've been in, but my statement to our staff is that we are, we're not joining it. We don't want to be in this recession. Let's keep going and let's, you know, let's keep niggling away and keep getting work and that. Unfortunately, we've been able to, you know, to, to carry on and here we are. We, we, there's light at the end of the tunnel and, and things are turning round. And TJ, I've come across to you and Colin's your dad, isn't he? Um, but how is work, how is business at the moment then for the company? How are things? Um, it's getting very busy now. We are, like we said, we're coming out of the recession. Um, we have noticed an upturn in work. We are able to recruit more and more people because we've got the work available. And we see that, like my dad says, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Well, that's just about it for now, but we'll be back in the second half with the latest business news and better news on shopping with new life for an old courtyard in Nottingham. Welcome back to Working Week. In this half, we'll meet the Forest footballer from the 50s who's now a successful businessman. I came from a very working-class family who were very hard-working. We'll meet the Nottingham man who gave up a job in Harrods to return to his home city and set up shop. I want to make Nottingham a more exciting, more dynamic, more prosperous place for everybody. And I'll be finding out what type of business you would set up. Because I'm into music and that, I would basically open up like a next studio. So let's get back to that factory in North Nottinghamshire and find out how a former Forest footballer has now become a successful manufacturer. But when it's painted, it'll be a lot better. It's a father and daughter team at the heart of this company. Colin Moyer was a professional with Forest back in the 50s when footballers were paid peanuts. After leaving, he started on a factory shop floor, but has built up this thriving family business, with his daughter TJ on board as a director. Colin, I mentioned before that some of our viewers will remember you as a Forest player, so tell me about it. Uh, I went to Forest in 1957 when I was 15, uh, uh, working on the ground staff, sweeping terraces, cleaning boots, looking after the away team on first team matches. One of the famous ones that I can really remember is the Busby Babes. Uh, in, the, the, in the October, they played Forest before the Munich air disaster in the February. And what were they like? Oh, great. Matt Busby was really friendly. Uh, I met, uh, well, most of, most of the guys that, 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 that got killed. Uh, what about, what about uh, Duncan Edwards, with? Duncan oh. Edwards, I must mention Duncan Edwards, was going to be the greatest player we ever had, but unfortunately got killed. As a boy, you, you, you always had the, the uh, football yearly and that, and you used to open them, you used to see all these big stadiums and all the great players, and, 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 and to be actually on that pitch, playing in front of the crowds, uh, was a bit scary. The times that I did have at Forest were very happy times, and it wasn't about money or anything like that. It was, it was about, you, you, you were doing something that you really liked. You left football and your family were your priority yeah. and, and now your whole business is based around your family. Well, How have right. you managed to do that? Uh, well... Have you forced them? <laughs> well, not really. I mean, uh, it, it's something that... Uh, it, it's an involvement that, you, you know, you, you either involve your family or your family involve things with you. And going from being a, a lad that sweeps the terraces to, to doing what I'm doing, it, it's, you know, it, it, it's no big difference. It, it's all about you know, having that, wanting to, wanting to do something, wanting to work, wanting to help somebody else, you know, it's not all about it. And TJ, you've been um, the beneficiary, I guess that's the right word, of that, that kind <laughs> of attitude. What's it been like having your dad as a boss? Um, I don't see him as a boss, I see him as a partner in crime, really. <laughs> um, 
I've been here 25 years. I was never, ever going to come and work for my dad. I was always going to do something else. I came literally to help put catalogues together one summer and stayed. I moved on from there, but my dad never let me have an easy ride. I'd always got to continue with my education. I'd got to learn the company inside out. I'd got to know our products. I was never going to sit behind a typewriter. So I've always worked alongside him as opposed to for him. And 25 years ago, I'm just thinking, you know, a woman in manufacturing would have been even rarer then than it is now. How tough was it when you started? It was very tough then because I was really thrown into it. I had to get involved with the engineering side and the estimating side, so I was with the men. Um, never felt phased by it. I've got an older brother, so that's always helped that you've got to be down with the boys. So I've not seen it as a problem. Um, other people see it as more of a thing than I do. And what's it like having, you know, such a close family firm? Does that, is it a it's a help or a hindrance at times. Do you talk about it when you're all at home? Yes. There is no what is work, what is home life. Everything just rolls into one. But sometimes it has it pros, sometimes as it comes. OK, it's time now for some business news. Let's cross to the Nottingham Post newsroom and meet the paper's business editor, Richard Baker. We've done a bit of international travel uh, this week in business and the country that we've been to, in print at least, is China. The reason is that this is the week when we've seen a Ningbo Friendship Bridge named in Nottingham. It's one of the new tram bridges and it's named after a city in China, not far from Shanghai, where the University of Nottingham set up its own campus ten years ago. Now that probably all seems a little bit distant to people living in Nottingham, but the fact is that we now get thousands of Chinese students coming over to Nottingham every year and we've discovered this week that they're spending approaching £37 million a year in the Nottingham economy, so this is a bridge that brings us more than trams. Another interesting story that we've had this week is the on-off saga of the Lace Market Hotel. There was huge disappointment last month when the hotel ran into financial difficulties. It closed overnight and more than 40 people lost their jobs. And there were also worries that that was sending out the wrong kind of signal about the Nottingham economy. Well, we've now found out that it's actually going to reopen in September, that it's got new owners and they're going to spend one and a half million pounds, giving it a massive facelift inside. So it's good news for the economy. Experience Nottinghamshire, which is the tourism organisation for Nottinghamshire, thinks it's a great idea that they're doing this. And the reason for that is that when people come to Nottingham and stay overnight, they spend five times more than they do if they just come for the day. Finally, um, we've done a story which is really at the sort of heart of human nature, and that's a business called Nurture. It was set up by the University of Nottingham at the Queen's Medical Centre back in 1991, and it's a specialist in helping couples who can't conceive go through IVF treatment to help them have babies. It's become one of the most successful of its kind in the country. Um, the problem it's had is that it's struggling to treat more people because of the constraints of this old site it's got at the university. We've learned this week that it's now gone into an academic partnership which is going to give it the resources to move to a brand new home. So it's um, a fertility business which is about to give birth to its own new baby. Well, as they say in business, when one shop door closes, another opens. And that's certainly the case across the city where one courtyard is being transformed. Newly developed and open for business, Cobden Chambers aims to be a different shopping experience. Bill Dern Properties spotted the potential in the rundown courtyard off Pelham Street in Nottingham City Centre. More than £100,000 has been spent improving the premises already, and now nine businesses are in and trading. It's a project that we've wanted to embark upon for some time. We've seen quirky, community-based retail projects work in other cities in the UK and in Europe. And there's a big exemplar in Birmingham called the Custard Factory, a destination in Manchester called Afflex Palace, and places like Argyle Street in Glasgow. And we felt something like that would work in Nottingham. And we felt these buildings where they were located and the character of the courtyard and the buildings would really lend themselves to doing something like that. So it's almost a project of passion rather than just economics. Well, actually, Ingram's Review is an interesting one because this is a local magazine. So here they're writing about Nottingham, Leicester and Beirut. Because Alex Smith has been here for two uh, months is and is delighted with how his business is growing already. Uh, Hi, Alex. How are you? Not too bad. How's it going? Right. So... Born and bred in Nottingham, he's recently moved back to the area after completing a retail course in Harrods. 
I think Nottingham's a really exciting place. There's so much happening at the moment with the resurgence of uh, business in the city, thanks in part to things like the, the Creative Quarter initiative. You're seeing lots of the proverbial green shoots sprouting out everywhere and I hope that I'll be one of those that will grow into something a bit larger than a shoot. I've been selling a lot of copies of the Green Soccer Journal and this is really the Thinking Persons magazine for football. So this has actually got uh, an article about the role of the ego in football. And Lots of different kinds of people, from graphic designers to students, photographers, the guys on the fashion promotion communication course at Trent have been great customers of mine. Also, all the different um, branding and creative agencies in Nottingham, so there's places like Enzyme and Spitfire. Those guys have been big customers of mine as well. Look at that thing, that's incredible. Yeah. And the plans don't stop there. The next phase we're going to move on is this disused factory building at the back. It's around 4,000 square feet, it's on four floors. We're going to introduce a catering offer on the ground floors, so an independent cafe of some sort. And then on the upper floors, we're going to create, it's best described as an independent department store. So whereas the, the units in Cobham Terraces are lockups, so units who are um, sufficiently strong to have their own unit, um, what we'll do on these upper floors is almost create concessions so for, for occupiers who aren't quite ready to make the leap to take their own pitch, they can actually take a bit of space within almost like a department store. So if you were going to start your own business, what would it be? Because I'm into music and that I would basically open up like a next studio, but like based in town or something, and like just work with like people who want to like record music and do music producing, etc. So like obviously because Nottingham's got quite a lot of talent to be honest. You can in introduce something new, you know, new kind of food because people are foodie nowadays. When it comes to running your own business or creating a business, uh, what are the pitfalls? Um, obviously money, the high risk, um, no, gamble, and know if you're going to be happy and made the right choice. And, um, and, and how do people avoid those pitfalls, would you say? Oh, doing your research first and knowing if it's going to work, um, having the money behind you and have a good think about it before you do take the risk. I think it's always a good client to start your own business and the problem is that you need a certain amount of capital to do that. Competition would stop me from doing it because there's a lot of competition now in the market. Um, what business would it be? Probably nails or something, I'd probably go into that. I would uh, create a, an airline company uh, that was a private jet that flew out clients from England, uh, specifically the East Midlands um, clients, uh, to Italy or France and uh, do tours with them and then and bring them back. So I'd like to have a, a private jet that does that. The start-up costs for that would be immense. I mean, yeah, I've got lots of money, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, that would obviously be one of the, the problems with it. But um, at the same time, I think the business should be exciting. It should be, you know, Richard Branson was probably sat there one day and said something similar. So um, if we're not going to think big, then big things won't happen. So... Okay, well, that's it for now on Working Week. Join us next time when we'll be finding out why one of the country's fastest growing power companies is moving to Nottingham and bringing new jobs with it. See you then. Yeah.